Hi everyone. Today's video is another in a series of videos I've been doing on the physics that govern the behavior of our FPV quads. And today I'm going to be looking at prop direction. We're going to be seeing what different aerodynamic effects can occur depending on your choice of prop direction. And I'm hoping by the end of this video, you'll have a really clear idea of which prop direction is right for you and the type of flying that you like to do. So let's get into it. So in order to decide whether to run props in or props out, we have to consider a balance of a few different factors. The importance of tolerance to clipping objects, camera fouling, maximizing the authority of the quad on all the flight axes, and aerodynamic efficiency. And throughout the rest of this video, I'm going to be using this black and yellow quad to represent props out and this black quad with red props to represent props in. Hopefully that makes it easy to follow because it's quite hard to tell sometimes whether a, a particular picture is showing props in or props out. So tolerance to clipping objects. This is perhaps the most important consideration for many pilots, particularly racing pilots. And in my opinion, I think props out in general provides a better tolerance to clipping objects. So if you're running props in and you have a branch or a race gate coming up straight head on to a prop, that, that prop will tend to push it in towards the body of the quad and it'll end up here and you'll have a, have a collision with the object. In contrast, if you're running props out, that same object coming in that same position now gets pushed to the side a little bit and your quad might just be able to sort of sneak past just clipping the prop and not actually having a full on impact with the body of the quadcopter. So if this is really important to you, then I would suggest that props out probably provides a little bit of an advantage when considering tolerance to clipping objects. Second consideration is camera fouling. And I think this is mainly important if you fly on grass, particularly long grass. In my experience, running props in can lead to spatter on the camera lens when you're taking off from grass, particularly if it's wet. Props out avoids this on takeoff, but does end up throwing grass into the stack, which, you know, I don't know if you think that's better or worse. However, this situation tends to be reversed when you're using turtle mode, because obviously the props spin in the other direction. So if you're running props out and you tend to use turtle mode, you'll probably find that that's when you get stuff thrown on into your camera lens. Alternatively, when you're running props in and using turtle mode, you're probably not going to get anything on the camera. In my experience, if you're using the camera for high def recording, like maybe you've got a split style camera or you're recording um, from the air unit or from the, the goggles, then props out does provide a bit of an advantage because at least you avoid the risk of getting stuff on your camera lens before you've even started flying. This next factor is a little bit more complex. We want the maximum possible control over all axes of the quad at all times. And in a quadcopter, roll, pitch and yaw are all controlled by spinning up and down pairs of motors. To roll left, you spin up the right motors whilst also spinning down the left motors. And I've shown that here by a green arrow to represent a motor that's spinning up and an orange arrow to represent a motor that's spinning down. On the pitch axis, if you want to pitch forward, you spin up the rear motors and you also spin down the front motors and that creates a pitching moment. Yaw is a bit more interesting than pitch and roll. So to your left or anti-clockwise, you spin up the motors that are spinning to the right clockwise. And you also spin down the motors that are spinning left or anti-clockwise. Conservation of angular momentum then causes the quad to rotate anti-clockwise. Which motors end up spinning up and down turn out to be different depending on whether you're running props in versus props out. So for the props in quad up here, if I want to turn to the left or anti-clockwise, I spin up the clockwise motors, which is front left and rear right. However, if I'm running props out and I want to turn left or anti-clockwise, 
I end up spinning up the front right and the rear left motors. And that difference actually turns out to matter quite a bit. So before we look in more detail at whether props in or props out is better for maximizing authority for a quad, I wanted to give a bit more further explanation as to how this conservation of angular momentum works when we're talking about the yaw axis. So initially, when you start a yaw move, the change in angular momentum of the motors and the props actually exerts an overall torque on the quad and kicks it into that move. But the moment that that change in speed of the motors and props has stopped, then another effect takes over. And that effect is that when air passes through a propeller, it leaves swirling in the same direction that the propeller was spinning. And that means that the propeller is giving the air angular momentum in the direction that it's spinning. And as with any system, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if you're giving air clockwise momentum, that means you've also got an equal and opposite anti-clockwise torque that's being applied to the quadcopter. So if you spin up both clockwise motors and spin down both anti-clockwise motors, you're overall giving the air that's passing through the blades of the quad more clockwise momentum than anti-clockwise momentum. And so there's a resultant anti-clockwise torque on the quad. And that is what allows a quad to keep spinning in a particular direction as you hold your, even once the motors and props have reached a stable speed. So let's talk now about turning a quad, a coordinated turn running props in. So in a coordinated turn to the left, the quad rolls and yaws to the left. And so, from what we've already discussed, there's spinning up of the right two motors and spinning down of the left two motors, added to spinning up of the front left and rear right motor and spinning down of the front right and rear left motor. And if we combine those two effects, we can see that the front left and front right motors are spinning up to do one part of the turn and spinning down to do the other part of the turn. Whereas the back two motors, particularly this back right motor, has to spin up for both the roll and the yaw component of the turn. And the back left motor has to spin down for both the yaw and roll component of the turn. And that really means that the back motors are working harder here. They have to spin up and down much more than the front motors in order to make the turn. Now, what about if we're running props out? So this is the same coordinated left turn, but this time we're running props out. So again, we have the right motor spinning up, the left motor spinning down. But this time we have front right and rear left spinning up and rear right and front left spinning down. And when we add those together, we see that the situation is kind of opposite to what we saw with props in. This time it's the front motors that have to work harder. They are spinning up more and spinning down more than the rear motors in order to make this coordinated left turn. And in fact, it's this front right motor that in some senses is working the hardest because it's having to spin up to do both parts of the move. So how does this affect authority? It turns out that props out is better for authority in this situation because with props in, the back motors have to work harder, and with props out, the front motors have to work harder. And the front motors have cleaner air than the rear motors because there's nothing in front of them. So if you're flying forward, this is, the front motors will typically have cleaner air than the rear motors. And that clean air improves their aerodynamic efficacy. And that means that they have more authority because of that clean air that they're getting. And you want the motors that are in the best possible position to be the ones doing the most work. So based on that analysis, props out should give you slightly more authority than props in. Particularly when we're looking at the motor that's spinning down, if that motor that's spinning down in the props in configuration is sitting in turbulent air, which we'll talk about in a second, 
there's more risk of blade stall here because this motor will be going very slowly in comparison to the other props because it's spinning down for both parts of the turn. And so if it's also in dirty air, there's a risk of getting a blade stall and the associated buffeting and, and unwanted vibration. A prop in completely clean air is less likely to experience blade stall. And then if we look at the prop that has to spin up, a prop in clean air is going to be able to do a much better job of transferring angular momentum to the air because it's, it's going to be more aerodynamically efficient. And it's also going to be able to generate more thrust. So both of those things are good for authority when that motor is having to generate torque and also thrust. Here in dirty air in the props in configuration, um, it might struggle just that little bit more to generate thrust and to transfer angular momentum because its aerodynamic efficiency is slightly compromised by its position. And so that slightly reduces the amount of authority the whole quad has. So in summary, props out is better for authority. Finally, let's talk about aerodynamic efficiency of the two configurations. And the first thing to cover here is that not all parts of a blade rotation are equal. Because with a quadcopter, we typically have quite a lot of forward airspeed most of the time. There is an advancing and retreating side of the propeller. So here in this animation, we've got a spinning propeller and you can see that the blade on the advancing side is moving against the oncoming air and the blade on the retreating side is moving away from the oncoming air. And that means that on the advancing side, the horizontal velocity of the quad adds to the prop velocity and on the retreating side, it's subtracted. Because the advancing side of the propeller blade has a higher relative velocity to the air, it generates more lift, more thrust than the retreating side. And because it generates more lift, because it generates more thrust, it also does more work on the air and therefore creates more turbulence or dirty air downstream of that side of the blade. And the faster the quad is flying forward relative to the rotation speed of the prop, the more pronounced this effect is going to be and the more you're going to see a difference between the level of turbulence downstream of the advancing side and the amount of turbulence downstream of the retreating side. So how does this affect a props in configuration? With props in, the rear props experience dirty air on both the advancing and retreating sides of the blade. On the advancing side of the blade, the inboard side is experiencing dirty air that's generated by the body of the quadcopter if there's any lateral velocity or crosswind or anything of that nature. The retreating side of the rear props is experiencing turbulent air generated by the advancing side of the front props. And so having the rear props both sides of the blade in dirty air makes life quite challenging for the rear props. And it can increase the risk of uh, wobbles and bobbles um, particularly in high angle of attack situations, um, in heavy prop wash moves, at low throttle, when you're going to be more likely to be susceptible to aerodynamic effects like this. What about a props out configuration? Well, with props out, the rear props see turbulence on the retreating side of the blade because the advancing side of the front blade generates turbulence. The body of the quad generates turbulence, but all of that turbulence is more concentrated on the inboard side of the, of the rear prop blade. And critically, they see relatively less turbulence on the advancing side, because as we said, the retreating side of the front prop creates less turbulence than the advancing side. And the further away you get from the body of the quad, the less turbulence you get from uh, aerodynamic effects on the body. So the advancing side of the rear blade here is in relatively clean air in comparison to a props in configuration. And as we said, the advancing side of a propeller blade generates the most lift, the most thrust, and is therefore the most important. And so based on that analysis, props out should provide slightly better aerodynamic efficiency than props in for most quads. And so this brings us nicely to the, the summary of this analysis. 
which is that props out is really better at handling contact. You tend to get more glancing blows if you run props out because the props push objects away from the quad or push the quad away from objects. Props out or props in is quite situational for camera fouling. It really depends whether you tend to get more camera fouling on takeoff or when you're using turtle mode and which is more important to you. Um, for me personally, I quite often use the camera for um, DVR recording. And so it's a real pain if it gets spattered just as I'm taking off. And because I tend to fly over quite long grass, I can't really turtle mode anyway. So um, I tend to find props out better for me. But your case might be different. Props out provides a little more authority in sharp turns because the front props are doing more of the work and the front props are in a better position. And props out provides slightly better aerodynamic efficiency because the rear props, the advancing side of the rear props, have slightly cleaner air than in a props in configuration. And so uh, they can be just a little bit more effective. I only ever run props out. But uh, if you're someone who runs props in or someone who runs props out, try switching it round and see if you can notice any difference in the performance of your quad running props in or props out. And let me know down in the comments what you think. I hope that you feel that this analysis puts you in a better position to decide whether to run props in or props out on your builds. If you like this kind of deep dive scientific analysis into FPV, just check now if you're subscribed, because about half of you aren't. And I wouldn't want you to miss the future videos I've got coming up on filter and PID tuning. If you like this video, you're really going to love them. I haven't got any more for you for today, so until next time, I wish you all very happy flying.